Good morning, traders. This is Jim Comiskey, Senior Market Strategist here at MF Global, coming to you live on Monday, believe it or not, October the 3rd. Um, give you some color commentary on the metals, amongst other things. Um, I've been, the, opinion that, the opinions that I'm no doubt about to express are mine and mine alone and are not necessarily shared by MF Global. Okay? Uh, first of all, the gold, recovering nicely here after last week's bloodbath, but we'll get there. Uh, gold is up $34.10 to $16.56.40. The silver, up $0.62 cents to $30.70. Uh, copper down nine oh five. dollars uh, Big decline in copper here, three oh six fifteen one five. dollars uh, Some bad Chinese numbers and Malaysian numbers, actually, also. Um, the dollar is up 49 to 79.56. The European currency down 98 ticks to 133.17.17. Okay. Um, last week, okay, bloodbath. One of the worst that we've seen in ages. Okay. Uh, just read this. This is courtesy of Kitco. Shout out to Kitco. Uh, the recent volatility in gold prices is historically high. Uh, that is correct. Volatility on the options, okay, is in the uh, 43 to 44 percentile, okay. Um, that is based, it's highest in almost 40 years, uh, since 1972. The drop last week, 8.5%, okay, represented a three standard deviation move. Okay, generally the way volatility works in options pricing is it, it's an, it's an off-the-cuff rule. Okay, that when something sells off, whether it's corn, whether it's indexes, whether it's gold, silver, uh, volatility increases because uh, basically it all boils down to human emotion. Okay, markets being composed of human beings exhibit human tendencies. Okay, so when you've got a slow, steady, bullish move, all right, it's generally a much calmer price discovery. Okay, but when you get a nasty sell off, people panic, volatility increases. All right, so again, it's the highest vol now in, in 40 years, almost 40 years. Um, the last time volatility was even close to this, okay, was when Bear Stearns fell, March 21st of 08. All right, so I just figured I'd point that out. Now, um, there are lots of reasons to continue to stack metals, okay, in my humble opinion. All right, if you're trading futures, use stops, make them tight, okay. Uh, this is a tough environment, particularly in the silver market. Okay, if you're stacking them, hey, dollar cost average. If you're trading ETFs, just monitor your position closely. Okay, um, but here's one of the reasons to be buying gold. Central banks are stockpiling gold like uh, at a fevered pitch. All right, um, Thailand in the month of August bought 9.3 metric tons of gold. Uh, Bolivia, Bolivia bought seven tons. And who can forget Tajikistan, uh, who bought 1.9 tons. Okay, Belar uh, Belarus, Mexico, Mongolia, okay, actually reduced their holdings by 1.4 tons, so they basically sold the highs of the move. Um, it's Turkey. By the way, trivia, well, I'll just answer my own trivia question. Turkey, the number three importer of gold in the world. Uh, imported 18.23 tons in September now. Those other uh, numbers were for August. In September, Turkey imported 18.23 tons. Uh, that's their uh, biggest one month accumulation in over three years. Okay. Uh, central banks generally aren't real, real smart, but you know what? In this case, I think they got it right. But they, in August, they, these central banks did buy the highs. Okay. Uh, that's not to say we're not going right back up there. Okay, this week, just as a review, all right, we got uh, Helicopter Ben, Ben Bernanke speaking tomorrow, Joint Economic Committee of, of Congress. Okay, there will be a Q&A. Generally, uh, the, way, the way he presents this, or the way this is structured, uh, we will get what we call a tape bomb, where we get the whole speech out on the wires at once. Then he'll proceed to read the speech, then he'll go question and answer. Okay, generally, you get the biggest moves when he goes Q&A, okay? Uh, because, you know, some of the questions can actually be intelligent. I know it's Congress asking them, but sometimes they ask intelligent questions. Uh, right, the uh, EC, European Central Bank, a lot of chatter. They meet Thursday. There's a lot of chatter that they're going to be not, not easing, per se, but announcing that they're going to leave rates unchanged and, in fact, downshift and say that they might ease down the road. All right, their rates are at 1.5% right now anyway. You know, not a whole lot of easing they can do. 
Um, okay, commitment of traders. I started to talk about this a uh, little bit in the, the Comiskey's corner. <coughs> and, <coughs> excuse me, if you'd like me to email you a copy of this, just shoot me an email. Okay, and I'll send it to you. Now, the Commitment of Traders is out every Friday. It's always one week old. Okay, so this is for the weekend of September the 27th. Okay, um, and you know, this, this even makes me more bullish on the metals because these, these numbers, these levels of net positions, and I'll read them to you, okay, uh, are very, um, like, low or average. There's nothing indicative in these numbers of, like, you know, uh, pan, well, a lot of blowout in terms of open interest declining and things like that. Um, very, very steady state. Okay, gold. The large specs, what we call the non-commercials, uh, it, it reduced their holdings by 44,278. The week ended the Sep 20th to 27th. Okay, they stand at 158,754 contracts. Okay, the uh, commercials increased their position by 52,000. Okay, now the commercials by, by virtue of being producers and you know resellers are virtually always short of anything here okay uh, commercials short 199,751 contracts and the little guys okay who we call the non-reportables uh, reduce their holdings by 7,757 to 40,998 again if you'd like me to uh, send you a copy of this or get you on my email address or address book rather um, I'd be happy to all right just shoot me an email or uh, at Jay Comiskey, uh, just letter J, C O M I S K E Y, at uh, mfglobal.com, or feel free to give me a phone call at the desk, uh, my number, 888 800 5373. Look forward to hearing from you guys. Uh, please keep the two way flow going. And uh, by the way, trading commodities is uh, in inherently risky and not suitable for all investors. Thanks, guys.